Tito de Moraes on the open side. Okay, we start. Here we go. Okay. And the Czech team got well, first in the middle. And now Italy recovered it and is on to the basket of the Czech and they are a few meters away still trying to keep position of the ball. Mm, it looks to me they play a little bit too far but away. They should maybe play a little bit closer. Let's see how the uh, Czech can uh, do the four checking and see if they can intercept those passes and uh, they are now fighting going to the right surface and uh, here we are the next white player from Fidenza is coming they're still in possession of the ball and now they're in the surface with the ball now that they are danger of being in the surface with the ball or you're an easy task and okay? they get grabbed uh, an attack is better to if it's possible you can be uh, just always pass and then don't dive in the surface unless very exceptional occasion that would be my Okay, so counter attack by the Czechs, they got the ball back, passing down the midfield, two players now, I don't know if the Italians are in position, yes, so it's two against two, the ball is on the close side, the player got tackled, an attack from the top, recovered, the ball is covered by Gabriele Cani, the captain, ooh, and now we have uh, Valentina and Kini on the goal, Against one of the Czech players. Yes, we see so Valentina Nikini was now on the on the goal. She's, oh, she's playing mm -hmm. and for the women's team as well. She's uh, captain and the women's team. She's been there for a long time. one of the attackers from Firenze also um, not letting the Czech players getting too close to the basket. An attack from the top, the goalkeeper got lifted by uh, the shoulders. I'm coming back in a minute. <laughs> I'm tapping. And that was. Uh, what was that? It's still 0 0. Both teams, they, they look. They're taking things slowly. <laughs> yes, sir. They are like, you know. There's a morning. It's the last game, I think, in this group. They both played against uh, Hemelin and yesterday, I think. So it's uh, the game for the second spot in this group. Yeah, we need to see who are in later uh, how are the groups uh, staying so that we're still in the groups games and you know the first positions are going to go in the next round. One of the Czech players actually yeah. lying on the goal. Yeah, and here you see have Samuel Moski who was pushing with that goal, and I think that was an active uh, pushing away by the Czech at the goal, and so now it's going to be free throw for Italy. I really like how the Czechs play. They play a bit. Um, oh, we have a two minutes. There's a two-minute exclusion. Hmm. I, I didn't see what was so Firenze what happened. Two yeah. minutes, one player is out. Then when I miss, play, uh, uh, yeah. it is, I didn't, we did not see the other four that was committed. We have one of the checks against the goalie alone. We push it up, but all of the team is still trying to stop that goal from happening. Nevertheless, the Czech still in position of the ball. Now Gabriele, the captain of the Fidenza team, recovered the ball is in the surface, waiting for anybody by himself on his team, started. but no one was there. Czech got the ball. You have Kuba waiting behind basket. Holding without ball. Free throw for Fidenza. Here we have now, yep, they have another 10 seconds with 5, so it's a good job what they're doing, I mean, Czechs need to take advantage of this, you know, over, um, you know, they have one more play in water, but uh, now Fidenze should be back with 6 plays in water, and they were very good at keeping 
the ball in position, so no score was achieved. There's some call from the referee. Something happened. And Firenze has also quite a lot of new players, but some people in the first tournament actually. Well, so still the Firenze player sitting outside, apparently there. Okay, getting stuck. Who was that? Oops. Maybe it could be Andrea Mnegin, the, co the coach? Tall player? I don't know. So, a bit less than one minute left for the first half time. Oh no, it's a... Uh, it's, no, it's a timeout. It's a timeout because there's five minutes left. And then, yeah, Firenze took a timeout probably to really the match now that they have, they have everybody. <laughs> but it's a nice game so far. And uh, I haven't... I've, I've played a few times against Firenze in the, in the Three Nations League. I like yeah. to play. I really like playing against the Czechs, against Budweiser. Strong players, they play a bit rough, but not not really rough. No, I mean, I mean, you don't want to play, you don't want to be in the game. Uh, the Trigon Berun against Budweis, you don't want to be no. between those two. <laughs> you don't want to referee this game either. Uh, it gets very heated, but otherwise, uh, I, I like how they play, I like playing against them. So, we have the Budjovic is attacking the Firenze basket not too aggressively, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Yes, I mean, they are, yeah, that's what I said before, it's like they're taking the time, they're well controlled, uh, the, I think they, they want to go you know, on the safe side and, and not take any risk, uh, they are probably... Um, they need a little bit more rhythm if they want to build up pressure. It's yes. to create some chaos and to open the gap for, for a goal. Because right now they are giving the, the Italians too much the chance to stay in position and to have still the defense under control. Now we have two against the goalie. The goalie just grabbed the ball and is going up, uh, being tackled away by two of the blue team. And now this is where you have a problem because now the one goalkeeper has been, you know, a bit uh, working on, on holding the ball up and, and now you could have probably a mistake. But uh, Firenze has the ball and the saved record. the situation very well. So. Oh, it was apparently um, called the referees questioning from what we see, I guess, uh, about uh, an exchange mistake. Yes, uh, the players in the water and on the bench, there was no no foul. It looked for me, there was another Firenze player sitting outside on the... On the mm. Well, you have too many players out, so it's your own... Problem. No, no, but they are on the... On the and out. Out. And a second one, there's two of them sitting out there. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, it looks like Firenze now is going to be with four players in the water. There was two mistakes, I mean, in the exchanging. Yes. I don't, but I see, but I three see white players in one of four, okay. There's four of them. Now Firenze is three minutes to go of the first half and it's four players. So, this is a chance for the Czech team to score. What? Another? What's happened? An another? No, I think they're, they're exchanging and to have uh, the strongest players in the water, I don't know. Oh, we have four players in the water, yes. Two people on the bench, there were five. Okay, the yes, I understand, okay. And one of the Czech players had stole the basket, we have three, and it's now... Oh, that was close, still the Czech are attacking, Fidenza needs to be very careful, but there was really a lot of chaos, and it's one goal for Budweiss, one zero, after Fidenza was with four players, and now they're going to get one back. Um, so it's going to be five in the water, um, let's see if they can keep for the next uh, minute and a half uh, the one tier because they do have a chance yeah, with the check they're team. Exchanging, they're exchanging the players out and out there. Yeah, because now there was a score and because of the score then one of the, the, the times uh, is, is gone, but the second one is still sitting. Yes. So we still have one player down and unless... Why the chat is um, lagging again? Okay. 
live stream on YouTube. So it's still power play for the chat, but it's not power power play. Yeah. Let's see what they do if they, you know, try to... They need to be really, now, um, how you kind of roll with the word for that, um, determined. Yes. Okay. And come with everything they have if they want to take advantage of this uh, uh, situation. So that they can be on the safer side by 2-0, because one zero still Fidenza can... Streaming can go check it. Oh, the trim fell down, okay. Okay, um, I don't know if people here can hear us. No, uh, either here. Uh, I closed okay. the mic so I can speak. Okay. Are we back live? Is this working? We have seven people watching here. Bei mir ist geht gar nicht. I think we're live. Can someone in the chat comment if uh, the game is live or not? So 30 seconds left for the first half time. Um, Budjovic has scored twice in total. Once when the Italians had four players in the water and once when they had five. Um, yeah, but I think that, that goal didn't count. Oh yeah, didn't count. Okay, so it's one it zero for the Czech team. Every team is uh, with both four teams in the water now. Italy was there for a few minutes with four players, then got a, score, a goal and then with five now they're back with six. And uh, there's one zero for them. The first half is over, but the Italians do have a chance here because they were actually having a little bit of um, a, a better game. They were attacking a bit better at the beginning. Then the whole chaos situation with the four players came into place. Then they 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 uh, got a score. So uh, still, I think they can turn the things around if they can get. The mental state will calm them, you know, come back to concentration and, and really uh, continue playing like they, they started the game. And yes. because, you know, the problem is when you have these kind of situations and a game is stay motivated, and if the team cannot, like, kind of let go of that situation, you know, and maybe be angry because there was a two uh, uh, exchange, exchange uh, mistakes. Now, they, uh, if they can stay focused, they still have 10 minutes and I'm, I think they can at least uh, go for a tie. And you know that this year there's no tie game, so even if they go for a tie, then they have to go to penalties. Yes. Uh, I'm really, really curious to see about how uh, this halftime evolves because we have on the Firenze side, we have a few young players uh, around 25 years old. So Firenze, no? Yes, Firenze. Okay. So they have some uh, young 
players, fresh meat, who was playing also in Graz in summer, so um, that, that's, that will be interesting uh, to see how they hold up. I think they have a better physical condition than the Czechs, I think, overall. The team is less heavy, less strong, I think, physically, yeah. but, um, but let, let's see how it evolves the second half time, because the game is quite, quite equal now, and um, the score is not right on the screen, it's 1-0 for Budjovice. And there was a, another ball that got in goal, but it was a no goal, it was a foul just before. And the goal by Budjovic was scored on a, when the Italians had two players on the bench, actually. So it was a six against four situation. So where are people watching from here? Yes, we have one person from Finland, one person... I would say from Greece because of the name, but I'm not sure they are. It could be from anywhere. 26 people watching. Yeah, that's too bad when this stream falls down, then it takes yeah. time for people to find the right link. Okay, so second half time about to start for the third game of today. Jakub finished then first at the ball, Kuba always very fast, this technique of grabbing the ball, getting to the ball and passing it to the back. So teams fighting together, fourth ball we have a scrum. So we're again at the basket of Firenze. Ah, okay. So Marco says that this yeah, they can hear us apparently, yes. So. <laughs> I'm back. I'm following with the chat. Uh, so we have, let's see what happened in this half. I'm really curious because um, this is a, a, a tie game. Both teams are at the same level. So Firenze has 1 0. I mean, you can't see it, but uh, I think that the, the first goal counted, right? I mean, I think they, they forgot to update the. the first one that it, it looks like, I mean, if we are correct, um, normally it should be 1 0 for both wise. Because um, in the first half, they, 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 they score while Pirenze was with four players. So uh, now they, they are attacking again with three against the goalie. They're coming from the close side, and um, Pirenze is defending with everything they have because they really have a chance to still tie the game. And uh, they were having a bit more of domination at the beginning. There was the chaos with the five and four players, and now mm, they are a bit behind in the game than what they had at the beginning of the match. So let's see if they can actually get the ball and, and see if it's not an attack. Otherwise, I mean, but they are doing a, a, a good job attacking, and uh, they also um, have more. Con they can attack continuously, they have, they're having more waves and more consistent and more aggressive and now we have one of the uh, players in the corner defending the attacker from that way and trying to recover the ball, but it was not successful, the blue team still has the ball, is coming up from the middle past the defender, attacking directly the goalie, there's three against, I mean three blue against two whites, and now the uh, Czech player could really push himself against the floor, push, bring the, the goalie up and score, so it's, it, it should be two, two, yeah, it was two minutes, but they were attacking more consistently, because before, when it was in the first half, they were attacking much slower, I mean, they did not have the, we were talking about that the waves were too far away and so they, they were not really forcing the mistake. The first, yeah, the first goal didn't count apparently because now it's 1-0. Yeah, I know, but I don't know if the technicians missed no, it. On the, on, in the pool, in the pool as well. Yeah. Okay, so sorry. Then it is 1-0 um, for uh, bad ways now. So I guess that's also why now they're playing a bit more um, Accurate, yeah. to win. Yeah. At the beginning they were a bit more cautious, I have the feeling, and now they're Passing back and forth uh, the ball, I mean they're doing a very good job. 
and uh, if you dance in alpha, then this is more the more trouble. Um, they were a bit more present in the first half of the game. They were more in control of the game. Or this is the feeling I, I had. And now they are a little bit more reacting to the game of the check. I think this check switch gears. <laughs> now, the, now they play more like, like, like they I know. They're they're <laughs> I know. Now they're playing more like I'm um, used to see the, their play. It's more more collected, more concentrated. Before, as you said, the first half time was very taking it easy, and I think they're maybe underestimated the Italians a bit. Okay. I don't know, but now it's more like more like them. Yeah, I mean, we we had bad words a few times uh, in the time. There's always alternate between bad words and 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 um, Triton Baron. Yes. And they 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 have this bit of bodily game. I mean. Yes, I did. I think if they were playing the, their games and with the German refereeing standards, there would be a foul every yeah. second. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, now um, we are in the half uh, of the Czech team, but Czech recovered the ball and with a counter attack. Let's see the Italians can position on time. Have the captain Gabriele Cani there stopping a three wide against two blues, and uh, the Italians recover the ball. They're passing the try now to bring the ball towards the other side, but there was no one there to pass the ball. Still, you know, the Czechs are very, very uh, um, aggressive, and I mean aggressive in a positive way uh, by for checking and recovering the ball. Um, so now we have uh, the captain attacking, passing the ball to the next player, and over the head, uh, I was a score. I mean, that was too much on the head for my taste. I mean, that normally you're not I think that the goalie was lifting herself at that point because it was just when they were yeah, changing. they were just changing, and so it was a little she bit, was a bit she left front. a bit of a gap, yes. you see. Yeah. Because you need to be very careful, you not to uh, hit the, the head with, with either with the ball or with anything else. Um, so time out uh, for Budjovice. Um, Aristides, today the audio has a new sound, meaning? I think it's <laughs> better. I mean, not today, <laughs> this game. <laughs> because this morning, the first two games, people were not too happy about the sound they had. It looked like you had some robots here um, commenting. So it's a uh, time out for Budjovice and um, still a few minutes left. And it's 2 zero for the Czech team, so I don't see... I think it's going to be tough for Firenze now to turn things around. Yes, because this halftime has really been only on the half of the pool a bit, midfield, tried to do some, some exits, but didn't really work. If the audience is uh, wondering so what's coming up is uh, male teams of Vienna against Barcelona uh, in the next uh, time. Yeah, there's two more men's games. So we have four minutes and a half to go. Italy is in position of the ball, is trying to pass the Czech defense. Wow, great interception for one of the uh, forwards. Uh, of the Czech team and now they're in counter attack but Italy is really trying to stop every player that gets in possession of the ball and is trying to defend and still they're fighting to see if they can turn things around. Four minutes is not a lot of time but it still, you, you know, know. <laughs> something can be done but the next Czech player is coming Nevertheless, he could not achieve a goal and had to go up with the ball, pass it to the next player. Um, Italy is in position. The defenders are there, the goalie is there. But they need to be a little bit more assertive with the uh, four checking because the checks, you know, for they can play four minutes around uh, the basket. They are winning, so yes. they don't need to risk. We're not oh. the ball under the back of the defender. <laughs> Number 47 here, Jakub Velda got uh, grabbed. Here we have Kuban Felustan was waiting for the ball under the basket. We got intercepted by a Firenze player. And Something. Free throw. Free throw. Oh, we didn't share. No, for Firenze, sorry. For grabbing equipment. Okay, so let's see. And there's Confidence with the ball. 
the next this guy is coming player. over the corner, the white player has chief face chief of the blue ones defending and um, they cannot really get away from the corner closer to the basket. So they're still passing the ball a bit up and now they're coming towards the goalie but uh, the Czechs are defending very well there in the space above the goalie and it's not really easy for the Fidenza team to get in touch uh, to get any closer to the basket uh, of the Czech team. Now we have the one white player against three blue ones but uh, there's no one so window of opportunity yeah. here where it was and the one against one, one no goalie but um, they should have been maybe another white player there that maybe could have scored the, the one goal but uh, it's easier said than done. Okay. It was already a movement of counter attack from the Czechs and I lost the ball so yes. Yeah. So now we have the Czech attacking the Firenze basket and uh, I think the goalie yeah, was looking for this replacement. Um, one and a half minutes to go, the Czechs are within four or five meters away from the Italian basket and there is in the surface Italy just recovered the ball but then not having enough players here to pass the ball. Okay, the next one had it and it's over the half being tackled away by the captain. He did not see that it was the next Italian player already with four uh, on the right and pass it back. These things like this really make a big um, difference. If you don't see you know, your uh, mate, your player, uh, which is forward so that you can bring the ball farther away and you start passing back, that can be really dangerous so we so have scrum one minute to go so the Czechs are holding on to the ball but uh, they're pretty much over their baskets but I know that they can they're cap capable of just now though there is uh, almost a minute to go and they're pretty much able to hold on to the, bas the ball and so that the Italians cannot get a hold of it until the game is over so yes, 30 seconds and now we have a uh, swimming back towards the Italian basket. Maybe let's see what happens if the ball falls. I really don't like when games end like <laughs> No, but I think <laughs> the Czech have done like a call around the ball and you know <laughs> they won't let it go. Okay, the ball fell down and it's in possession of the next blue player and now I think this uh, one white player <laughs> against three blue ones and, 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 and I said it was a goal. goal. That was, well, but that was, a, you know, a risk uh, that the Italian had to take, trying to put everyone forward. And if it's 2-0 or 3-0, but at least you are trying to make it 2-1. I mean, yeah. those kind of risks toward the end are... not to lose anyway. No, you know, exactly. This is the better. way of doing it. You know, you have to go with everyone forward. 3-0, right? 3-0 for Buda um, congratulations to both teams. Very well played for uh, yeah. Firenze. Uh, it went for them better I guess that Firenze will be a little bit disappointed because at the beginning they had like, mm, the, the game a little more under control, if that's the way of saying it, and then eventually after those minutes where they had four players out, it's like, it changed. Yeah. I think the dynamic of the of the game. It's like then they did not have mm, the calm and the head anymore. It looked like there were more chaos. If it is what it looks to me, at least I would like to talk to Gabriela later just to see what what it, how it felt. So now it's coming Barcelona in blue against no. Actually, it's supposed to be the other way around. Yeah, no, in black. Normally, Liana uh, should be. Um, so let me. Um, Yes, sound, we're back. We just had to switch okay. our microphones uh, to make also our plan, catch our breath back. And uh, we are, so Lisa and Annika coming Hello. 
Good morning, Annika. Good morning, Lisa. So now we're, we're just three people actually today, this morning. Um, so the game is in blue. We still have to change the, the names written on the top. So in blue, it's actually Uwe Zivin, Vienna from Austria, and in white, we have Barcelona from Spain. Do we want to win the team? Let's uh, yes. So for Vienna, we have uh, number three, Andreas Tamsman, five, Akos Apna, seven, Peter Marecek, eight, Jan Ove Wiesner, nine, Thomas Jufman, ten, Ulrich Pont, eleven, Matthias Neuntalfield, twelve, Andreas Pell, thirteen, Peter Kalkober, fourteen, Thomas Denk, fifteen, Andreas Schneiderbauer, eighteen, Markus Wimmer, nineteen, Baldwin Langel, twenty, Thorsten Lütke and 57, Jan Kindermann. And the team for Spain is number one is Albert Rodriguez, number three is Luis Abreu, uh, number four is Ferran Rigual, number five is uh, Alejo Betancourt, number seven is Leonardo Ateaga, number nine is Camilo Gaetan.